you know, at least know the show that you're on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dude! British man detained for climbing the 72nd floor of Seoul Skyscraper. Wait, so was he climbing up the outside? Outside, yeah. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah, no, he didn't, like, just get in the elevator. <laughs> Like from the inside. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. Here's to the next episode of the Edward Dodds podcast. You know, at least know the show that you're on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, the most, like, who gives a fuck moment. Ed Squared, dude. What sort of stuff have you been up to recently? What have I been up to recently? Being chronically unemployed? Right, sure, yeah. Uh, that's been fun. But that's kind of like normal. We we just graduated uni, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like probably the norm. Yeah, to be honest, if this was like second year, I would be very happy wasting my entire summer. But because I'm now like done with uni, done, mm. uh, it's like, got to get a job. Uni's kind of possible. like a good distraction. Like, oh, I'm doing uni, so I don't really have to be achieving that much apart from uni, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just sets up the goals for you, so. Yeah, it's kind of like, but now there's no deadlines. <laughs> I think that's something Katie was struggling with, my girlfriend, like, what the fuck? Who am I working for now? You just kind of like. There's no deadlines, mm. right? So you have to do everything yourself, and you have to be self-disciplined. Yeah. Uh, which, luckily, I'm great at. <laughs> like, how does one learn self-discipline? Like, that's interesting, you know? I feel like you learn self-discipline from just fucking up a fucking lot. Fucking up a lot, yeah. 100%. Like, but the consequence of like laying around and doing nothing, I feel like that's like delayed when you realize, oh, that has consequences, because mm -hmm. it probably feels quite good at the time. Oh yeah, sitting there watching like fucking Family just, Guy or yeah, some or, like, shit. Yeah, doom scrolling on your phone. It's yeah, like, doom scrolling. Is that what they call it? Doom scrolling. I don't know. It's just like when you're just scrolling because there's nothing else to do. I, that's yeah. what I call it anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty um, self-destructive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, have you heard of, like, sludge content? Well, what's sludge content? <laughs> it's like this, um, it's, it's usually in, like, shorts. So, like, okay. YouTube shorts or, like, Instagram reels, TikToks. You've definitely seen them. It's, like, where half the screen is, like, subway surfers or, like, what, what else? Like, slime and stuff and then the other half is someone talking like on a podcast <laughs> yeah this is i just got the meta thing you were talking about this but below you was just someone <laughs> playing like angry birds yeah i've seen it but like it, it transcends because then there's like three going on i've seen this man i find Sludge it so, content. yeah that's yeah that's what it's called mm. i find it so tiring but i cannot look away yeah They've like managed to just put a needle into the center of our of our brain, and they've figured out how to make us tick. I don't understand it though, because you're not focusing on either one. You're kind of just like, but that's it. Like you're not really taking in any information. Oh yeah, like it's just visually stimulating. Mm. It's just stimulating. Like you have like words, like mm. those are good words. I can listen to those words, and then you've got like something that's really visually stimulating in front of you. I can listen to these words and be visually stimulated for a bit. Yeah, I don't know. There's got to be, like, so much mispotential now. Like, really talented people who've just probably, like, fell down that wormhole. I don't know. I look at, like, well, we grew up with it our whole childhood as well. So we're kind of, are we probably uh, one I, of the first examples of that. I think it's kind of self-correcting in most individuals, right? Where you have, like, a day where you're just useless and you're just watching, like, sludge mm. content all day and then... Like the next day, you're like, oh, I should probably do something with my life. Yeah, yeah, that's maybe the healthy way of looking at it. I'm sure there are people who are in like very unhealthy spirals or whatever. Yeah, because like going outside and shit. Well, especially after lockdown, people being social wasn't the norm. Mm -hmm. So then, obviously, some people didn't even readjust to that and got a lot of anxiety, social anxiety. The comfortable thing, the fucking like dopamine hitting thing is oh that's good yeah, that feels good dude pretty much yeah. i don't want to like knock on my roommate's door and like that could go wrong that's an issue this is safe mm -hmm. i feel like scro scrolling through your phone that's like the yeah, safe it's like a really safe consistent dopamine mm. hit that mm. just trains your brain to be laid back so you know when you when you've been trying not to do that you know laying back being chronically unemployed what what have you been trying to do I've been focusing on my music mainly, trying to uh, build connections in Manchester and just try to sort of 
put my name out there essentially mm-hmm. um it's a slow process mm. very slow process because i think you were uh, you you came on the show deck in like maybe like six seven months ago now mm-hmm. so well first of all like what do you do just in case people are coming in from last you know they don't know who you are yeah so i'm a, a musician with a tech background so most of my education is in like music technology so i spend a lot of my time in studios on like producing and that sort of thing but i also very much enjoy playing music so i play like bass and saxophone professionally um so i'm playing gigs doing studio sessions like working as a session musician um and generally making no money doing it Mm. (laughs) such as the industry yeah there's not many other the industry well the other one i can think of is stand up there's many other like well just stage jobs performative jobs Mm -hmm. usually like that like does the main like achievement come from performing in front of crowds like because you're getting no money out of this right it's obviously purely pat well you were getting little bits yeah i mean what's driving you like what to be honest um what drives me is it's it's just for the passion of the music really it's something that i've really enjoyed doing and it's Mm. something i've really enjoyed doing pretty much my entire life and uh i don't see that changing even if Mm. the money's not great yeah i'm gonna make it work you kind of like music your whole life i feel like right yeah your interests yeah i mean it's changed over over the years right i started playing i think it was probably a recorder Mm. when i was in primary school but um i played classical on the euphonium which is like a sort of medium medium brass Mm. instrument uh which as like a teenager was not really what i wanted to be doing so then I switched over to saxophone and, and all the stuff that I'm doing now. So it has changed over the years. Do you feel, um, you know, saxophone people, they get like the fangirls. Like, what's the life of a saxophone musician, man? Like, Sax player. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely the coolest instrument in the Because, like, it's quite seductive. you got to think of these wind instruments. We're looking at someone kind of sucking off a little instrument i do wonder why the saxophone of, like, all of the instruments is just known as, like, this is the sexy instrument the sexy instrument because a lot of like classical like music like you know sexy music was made i'm thinking of a song right now um but i can't think of the song name but like that was in every like film in the 60s or 70s when Mm. a sex scene was happening right yeah i i think it's probably also the fact that it's a relatively new instrument so it's not included in like loads of classical Mm. i think it was only uh, don't quote me on this i think it's only a couple hundred years old oh okay um so most big names in the classical scene, mm. <laughs> Mozart, Beethoven, yeah. they would never have written for it because it these big exist. names, man. You know yeah. these headliners, heavy hitters. Yeah, the big dogs. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. <sighs> that must be such a different world now to what it is, though. Like being um, a musician back when there was no social media, and mm-hmm. it was just like people went and saw you live, and that was it. Yeah well yeah because now i feel like there's more um benefit in knowing how to market yourself so much better um to get to that point sure you can have managers eventually but like starting out you need to be able to market yourself you also need to be good live Mm -hmm. there's like so much more you have to be such more of a well-rounded person i feel like yeah I, i think it's the internet has taken the industry and and taken it away from what it used to be so mm. there was of course big record labels which do still exist and then you get picked up by like talent scouts and you go up through the label Mm. and you get funding and marketing and there'll be whole teams of people to help you um but of course you did have to be live good back you'd have to be good either way right Mm. in order to get picked up by a label right so some things haven't changed uh i just feel like now a lot of the responsibility has been reflected onto the individual it's very personal yeah because well with social media like you're expected to show a bit more of your personal life. Not everyone does, but like stories and like, it is kind of encouraged. Like fans want to see nowadays what people are eating for dinner. Like, I don't get that with that. Like if I love someone's guitar or I love their, like the singing, I don't really care what they're eating for dinner on a Friday night. You're not in the celebrity culture then. No, but most people are. 
Is that true? Do you think most people are in celebrity most culture? Most people. Popular, dude. Like, well, yeah, it's definitely popular. Mo- it's popular I would bet most. Yeah, if it's popular, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would. I would probably say most. And I think a lot of people try to say they aren't, but ah, maybe I'm one of them, dude. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It, but it's interesting when when you um, kind of look too much into someone, especially like a musician or a comic. I think I was talking about this with you the other day. The like illusion goes, like I can get for me anyway. I kind of like you're a musician. Sing to me. No, not sing to me particularly, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? You agree? Like you're not into celebrities either, though, right? Not especially. I follow musicians and mm. I, I follow individuals, but it's never to a point of obsession. Mm. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I can't imagine being a fangirl, really. Well, you have to go through a lot of surgery, I suppose. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, have you ever experienced any of that? Like that? Like, well, you're on the other end of it. Um, uh, obviously, well, like a lot. Hardly. So, like, what's the biggest crowd you performed in front of? I think last time I spoke to you, I think you only said in the hundreds. Yeah, so previously it would have just been in the hundreds. But uh, we recently, this is uh, Jay Page and the Cowards, we recently okay. played um, at Bridlington Pride, mm-hmm. which was... Shout out the Brig, Brid Massive, man. Hell yeah. Um, I think that was probably anywhere between, like, 800 and... 800 yeah 800 to a thousand people mm. it's hard to tell um the yeah they didn't really have like a good head count because people mm. were coming in and out and there's a lot of people right it's a lot of faces <laughs> was it to the point where like it's just like a sea of people like you know like you see these big festivals like um wh- what was it recent glastonbury yeah i mean it did nothing compared nothing to compared to but the, surely there gets to a point where you're like well these aren't humans. Like the way people perform on stage, though, there has got to be a certain level of like, you've got to not be self aware. You can't be in the moment too much. Do you know? If you mm-hmm. think about it too much, I think I'd get in my head too much, man. It's it's honestly a skill. Like there's so many times where in live music you just make a mistake, and because I'm playing bass, it's pretty fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> kind of everybody kind of goes off that, dude. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. You're guaranteed to make a mistake at some point during mm. the set, and you kind of just have to let it go. Because if you focus, like, oh, I just made that mistake, yeah. it you get into your own head. It's mm. it's a mental spiral. It's not good. Yeah, but but you're you're kind of in loads of different like kind of things. So you do J Page is like rock or like what is it? Like, yeah, I'd, I'd describe it as rock. Rock, loads of different like genres, which is interesting because you can do that like at this stage. Do you feel like at a certain point, you have to hone it down or you have to, like, in a career, like, choose, oh, this is going well for me in this genre, like, I need to, I don't know. I feel like if you're trying to create a brand, then it's very good to be locked down mm. to a genre. Yeah. Um. So if I was trying to market myself as an artist, mm. which I, I don't think I am, really, mm. um, then I'd lock myself down to a brand. But then there are artists who just change yeah vibe constantly it's probably more likely to like you have more longevity in that because then you're more likely to just be doing what you want like doing mm-hmm. yeah mm. i think yeah. also it probably helps with creativity if you're just told by your higher ups like mm. make another one of those albums that sold really well yeah it's like oh yeah man it's that <laughs> thing now and I, i'm i'm noticing it more now out of uni you know money comes more into play with things and like judgment start going another way because you like you look at your parents and stuff like there's examples where circumstances come over your own like passion and your and money Mm -hmm. it's like kind of the sad thing but i'm like i kind of had didn't have that vision during uni because you kind of just get caught up in it and then it ends it feels like it'll last forever until it doesn't (laughs) (sighs) yeah man I mean, you're still kind of doing washing. You're still doing like the monotonous things, but you're not really like. It's yeah. it is a strange like it's such a strange feeling because the end of uni is such a crush of like deadlines and stress and re- eating really mm. badly and like not <laughs> taking care of yourself. At least that's how it was for me. Uh, <laughs> um, and then you submit that last thing, and it's like, oh, I'm now done. Mm. And it just, it's this massive rush, then an immediate, definite cutoff, and then you're free. Yeah. And it's like, 
Christ, I don't know what to do with myself now. Everyone starts throwing these words at you like, oh, what's a mortgage? What's like stamp tax? Everyone like starts throwing words at you. So Eddie, what's your pension situation? <laughs> <laughs> like everyone just starts like throwing words at you like you're expected to know. Mm -hmm. <sighs> God, man. Uh, and it's, uh, I work mainly, well, I work in like TV and it's it, most of the time with like older people as well. And it's kind of like, God, I want to ask questions because I kind of want to be aware. But then also the more aware you are, the more like depressed you get, right? He's saying that if you know what's going on, you're just depressed. That's quite a cynical world. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, if I'm not aware of tax, don't have to pay it, dude. No, just That's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> ignorance is bliss. <laughs> kind of just want to skip that. Could I just install the knowledge? Like, yeah. just can Patch Elon Musk in. not like hurry the fuck up with the <laughs> microchip? <dude? laughs> the idea, will just upload it straight. Um, there, <laughs> Elon Musk is having a fight. Um, with well, no, I don't know if it's confirmed, but imagine all if right. it's actually. I don't know anything about this. Give me all the context. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to tell you, dude. All right, dude. Do you want to wait? Sorry, dude. Um, so Elon Musk might be having a UFC fight with Mark Zuckerberg. Sure. Now, there's no... I don't think this will happen. But fuck, imagine... Now, you'd want to... Right, I know you're not a celebrity guy, but I'd fucking watch that. To be fair, yeah. Count yeah. me in. Count me in. Dude, like, what? Too <laughs> pasty, like, fucking... <laughs> Like, I feel like that is way more interesting to watch. Like as much as I like, um, like professional UFC. Yeah, they're really good at it. I want to see the average guy. Yeah, just try his hand at it. Yeah, because like even like yeah, you see knockouts, but kind of like you're no, if you're a professional fight, you know when someone's gonna punch you, you're gonna be able to absorb the punches. But mm -hmm. that's why I like street fights and stuff. Well, obviously I don't encourage it. But bloody, like, some of the clips, man. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I mean, if they are, if Elon and Zuck are actually going to uh, have a fight. Yeah. They've got the money. They could train, right? They can get the best yeah. trainers in. Yeah. Who do you think takes that fight? Who do you think wins? I think Zuck. Zuck's got him, dude. Mark Zuckerberg would probably win, win that fight. Yeah, I actually think you're right. Um, yeah, he's the only one I've seen. He's like... He went to like a jujitsu tournament and just like won the tournament. Did he? Yeah. Do you remember what my podcast is actually called? <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Yeah. It's the Ed Squared podcast. Oh, nice. Well, that's a little ad there, you know? Yeah. But watch Ed Squared. <laughs> You know, you could sound like you a bit more passionate. You know, sound like you're taking the piss a bit, dude. You know. Well, Eddie, do I listen to this podcast? Um, technically, you are, but you're on it, Does and you're count? listening to. It. Yeah, I'd listen say this is a view. This probably counts as a view, right? We could mm -hmm. take. I'll take all the views we can get. Yeah, yeah. This is two views already. This is two. Fucking hell! Remember my birthday? Yeah. My birthday evening. I got fucking recognized. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Set the scene. So it's my 21st birthday the other day. Uh, going out for some drinks uh, with Declan and some other mates. We get to this pub uh, in Manchester. And there, it, well, you guys go and get drinks. I'm sat down with my mate Rob. These two guys, bear in mind, I think they're slightly older than me, come up to me, like, turn me around. Hey, mate, love your podcast. Can I get a photo? Now, they must have noticed, like, I went into, like, automatic, like, shock this is a prank <laughs> <laughs> i went into that mode so, what so did you do? i like d i seemed a little bit happy but i didn't want to be like overly happy just in case there was like cam not cameras but they were taking the piss yeah how yeah. fucked is it that my brain went that way well you just would not accept that that really happened you were I like how many drinks was i deep I don't know. You had been out drinking before yeah. we joined. Because I, going looking back, I would like to enjoy that moment more. <laughs> but my mind went into like self defense mode. Yeah. Like this isn't happening. This has to be a joke. Obviously, this is a prank. Self <laughs> self defense mode initiated. It did because they, <laughs> they passed the phone to Rob. <laughs> Rob starts taking this photo. Rob's our Scottish mate from uni, but he like he does it like this. Just like he was fucked. He was fucked. Bear in mind, like he just did it at like a weird angle. It was bear in mind in Manchester. It rains all the time. It's pissing down. Mm. I was wet through. So now there's a <laughs> photo of me online. I don't even know. They're probably listening right now, dude. Dude, like shout out. 
Hi guys. I, you know, I'd <laughs> still I'm in a bit of disbelief, you know. Um, but thank you if you guys were genuine, you know. Yeah. I, I think it's those TikTok comments, man. They've got me like dialed into like thinking everyone's out to get me. Do you know how <laughs> that is fu- like and I haven't even read comments in like a couple months. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably the way you should do it. Like not read comments. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's really hard though, because I don't read them. But Katie reads them out. Really? <laughs> she like finds a funny one that disses me. No, that's pretty funny. That is. Fun. <laughs> I would probably do the yeah, same. Yeah. But yeah, like that's really bad. That's a really bad personality trait. Going to defense mode. Well, it was also the fact that you assumed that it was orchestrated by one of us. Yeah. Like, well, it was my twenty-first birthday. Yeah. We're all out in this pub together. <laughs> like this is not. Ne- this doesn't happen when I'm by no. myself. But then again, we had been searching like different places. Mm. The only way we could have set it up was if we had like people mm. in every pub yeah. in the area. <laughs> I think the lesson I learned from that is um, believe in the best in people. Like don't go into something with a negative mindset. I should have been really happy. They enjoy me. And then if they were pranking doing that, I was like, oh, that shucks. Yeah. But I prioritized, which was really bad, <laughs> prioritized not embarrassing myself over like being in the moment, which is really bad. There's something I need to work on. So do you think you didn't handle it very well? No, like on the surface, I think they didn't know, like, they don't like know me. So hopefully they thought I was good and like actually enjoyed it. But sure, yeah. like, God, anyway, you know, have you ever been like recognized or any shit from that no, from music? No. But while y- you still have like, I, I don't think the average people like have ever have that. Like I'm not, that's probably not ever going to happen again. But as being on stage, like people are adoring you. People are, if you're especially doing good, man, a good set mm. or a good, you know, gig. Oh yeah. It's a good feeling. It's that high, man. Mm. It's like such a powerful feeling. Yeah. I, um, but then again, it, it goes like both ways. If you have a really bad set, it's like mm. crushing. It just destroys you. You just have to like walk past everyone. Like, well, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was uh, we had some technical issues on stage at our most recent gig. Really? Where was this? So this was at Bridlington, Bridlington oh. Pride. Uh, so it was the biggest audience that we'd ever played. And um, yeah, we had like major technical issues relating to some of the backing tracks that we had. Uh, I won't go into the details, it's not very interesting, but one of the songs, like, partway through, just completely fell apart, <laughs> and so, like, everyone's just looking at each other, and we're just like, what do we do? <laughs> no one's, like, taking a lead. Just, I love that, like, you're trying to chill about, you know, internally, everyone is like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, to be honest, I'd been really nervous before getting on stage, and then, as soon as I'm on stage, I feel fine. Mm. But then, like, these massive technical issues happen. Yeah. And I've never really had, like, major tech, no, never like a show stop. Yeah. Uh, until this mm. gig. And to be honest, I was fine with it. I like, it's just like, well, I'm in for the ride. Like, I might yeah. as well just smile and wave. Yeah, I suppose it'd be different if you were like a solo artist or like, mm-hmm. but you know, there's like like diffusion of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. that's that's, that's fucking good. That's a, is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, a better way, a nicer way. Diffusion of responsibility, <laughs> camaraderie, same, yeah, no, thing. same thing. Yeah, same two thing. sides of the same coin. You're you're just better at marketing yourself than me. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> too honest of a person is not good for like. Say if like Taylor Swift was like, came out and said, "Oh, I just had like the best shit ever, man." Like, she's just, like, honest. Fuck up a brand, right? Would it? Yeah, it probably would. Yeah. Yeah, it probably would. You say that, like, <laughs> oh, you should just be real. But, like, sometimes I harm. But, on but then the... again, like, would you say that to anyone? <laughs> like, would you say that to me? Like, you come downstairs. And no, I'm I don't. Trick. Shit is very, like, personal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Except with our paper-thin walls, you can just... <laughs> I feel like you're sharing it with everyone in the house. What, from your room, you can just hear people. <laughs> yeah. That would suck. You, that's probably one of the worst things. Waking up to someone shitting. That that would suck. Be a bad morning. Yeah. Can you think of a worse sound to be woke up to? Probably. Like yeah, you're getting killed or something. I guess like a chainsaw to the head. That'd probably mm. be worse. I feel like uh, your experience last year with water coming in through your ceiling was pretty bad. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> like. We forget how much fuck things have happened through just living through uni in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. God. So we move in. I, I was in like a bay window area. So um, like the front room of the house, bottom floor. And I put my setup underneath like the ledge where like the tiling is over the house. In the bay window, basically. In the bay window. 
and um going to sleep one night um you know i i some i didn't turn off my computer um i usually do it's quite i wasn't playing for the bills you know there's cost of living so mm-hmm. it didn't play um you know tucked up in bed fall asleep wake up um to a small like dripping sound at like 3 a.m i was like okay well someone's like in the shower it's probably like internal pipes so i like i turn back over when and, you're half asleep it's so easy to oh, just like, it's just like yeah I'm, I'm i'm so comfy i'm loving this it's so <laughs> sleep is fucking good it's great um starts to get a bit faster so i'm like okay what's that and starts to get a bit louder until like i start like actually hearing it in my room and i start waking up like <laughs> that is a bad feeling it's such shit waking up to like an emergency i just wake up to my ceiling raining inside rain mm. sorry i didn't know there's a <sighs> and then like right on top of where my computer was as well this this rain <laughs> started falling right on of top of my keyboard and computer and i think i was a couple of seconds like away if i didn't like move my shit straight away from like losing thousands of pounds of equipment oh my god that's great when you're a student oh. and can't afford to like <laughs> i wonder who would be liable there would it be on the landlord or would it be on you i'd probably it's probably we've signed a contract yeah, true. there'd it's probably be a loophole almost definitely contract. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, <laughs> well God. the issue with like landlord tenant contracts in general is that you just have no control as a tenant you just kind of have to eat what you're given where else am i gonna live all these contracts are like oh god they're all equally bad mm. this this is my backseat um psychologist working right now but i'm like okay i feel like because i was the youngest of like three older brothers and it was it was you know pretty full-on growing up with uh three older siblings and um i think that's like the root of my imposter syndrome in music mm. what yeah. when do you ever feel like what situations do you ever like oh i shouldn't be here like this i don't deserve this like what will it be will this be random no it's not random like uh it's usually when i'm getting paid <laughs> oh really yeah like if i'm if i'm getting paid well as well mm. i mean there was um or like auditions man i'm so bad at auditions there's like the most recent audition i did was for a function band right and uh massive imposter syndrome i walk in and like everyone's veterans like they've been doing it for years and years and years they know these tunes like the back of their hand and i've never played a function gig Mm. i'm really not that good with popular music so like function tunes yeah i don't know them all that well it's like um stuff to get people moving on the dance floor yeah so like weddings like copper events things like that it's all covers though so Mm. um and i like rocked up and i was like I'm going to smash this. And then everyone was like, absolutely top of their game. And I was like, I am not remotely in with this crowd whatsoever. And I had like the biggest imposter syndrome to the point where it was like, I don't, I don't think I've got a chance of even making the cut whatsoever. But I did Mm. made it as a dep, which is like, you know, it's not the main group, but it's the, people mm. who sub in if yeah. the main group aren't there so it's like you know not bad mm. do, you, do you think there's something redeeming about that though you're saying there was a lot of other people with more experience who were older than you well you can look and say well if i prove to these guys that i've just got even a glimpse of what these guys have got that i've got potential maybe like it all of course it depends on who's trying to employ you but th- like oh i'm young uh, I, I show ambition, like those two qualities and maybe show that you show up and like you're professional. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe that could take you in a way. Like I think that would maybe honestly, help with the imposter syndrome. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, I think you, the reason that I got the job in the first place was just because I showed up and I was respectful and I dressed the part and I did everything mm. right. But like in terms of knowing the songs, yeah. I learned the ones that we were learning, but they mm. expected you to just be like, right, we're going to play this. And then you'd just be like, Yep, let's play. And then <laughs> so the ones that they picked were um, Treasure by Bruno Mars. Right, yeah, I know uh, that song. And in the live versions, there's like quite specific horn stabs, which I just didn't know. I Not at all. Because how many songs could they have picked in this audition? I mean, it could have been 
any popular song basically really like spanning, hundreds spanning like 50 years 60 yeah, years yeah god that's incredible because when you when you say stuff like that i don't even like think of that when i think of music i think of artists but there's, there's these people who just like have this internal knowledge of like that many songs mm-hmm. and they just pull out that it's hat. incredible it really is yeah and it's the fact that they can just be like you know we're gonna play treasure by bruno mars mm. and then they just talk for like 30 seconds they're like this is the key we'll do it in uh there's some stabs here here and if you're not familiar with it like this does this 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 here's the bridge and then they're just like cool ready and you just hit. yep <laughs> that is so like bizarre to me because i'm i don't i couldn't even like grasp i've only just started learning a little bit of guitar mm-hmm. and like learning the smallest bit of a song like so you're saying when you get to a certain point in music and learning music and memorizing stuff, you get quicker at picking up music? Like, Well, it's a skill that you have to hone like any other. These guys have been doing it for years where you just like, you have to learn songs. So you get mm. very efficient at learning yeah. the bits that you need to know and jamming out the rest. Right. It's like pretty much when you think of a song, mm. there's maybe three or four key elements that you need to get down and then the rest right. of the song you can sort yeah. of just like mm. figure out as you go um usually it's like a hook so mm. you learn like on saxophone yeah you learn like the main melody mm-hmm. and then once you've gotten that you're good basically yeah but um for like guitar learning chords and stuff i don't know man mm. it's a tough game yeah, that that is that does sound like fucking tough and just kind of like, what the fuck, I and we're only just scratching the surface of that. It feels mm-hmm. like, what what about like? I wonder what your thoughts were on like modern music and where we are now on stuff that is most popular. So it's stuff that gets the most hits in the charts, and you probably, um, I know you probably don't listen to a lot of that stuff, but mm. compared to like stuff you make and the time it takes and you listen to the stuff in the charts and what most people like listening to i I always think when you're looking at chart music it's not about what most people like listen well it is but it's not what they like necessarily it's i feel like with pop music quite a lot of it is just good enough it'll like it's catchy enough it's good enough Mm. but uh it's never it's always quite vague Right. intentionally so yeah. to appeal to a larger demographic okay um and chart music is that just sorry is that it just in the lyrics or is that in the music itself like when you say vague i would imagine oh the the lyrics itself are um vague Maybe. but when you say music can be There's vague definitely a lot how can how can music be vague sorry I, i'm not too familiar with that well it's i'm saying it's in terms of mass appeal yeah uh the easiest way is to go through like a formula and mm. There's quite common pop music formulas, which yeah. a lot of people will follow. But then there's a lot of people who break those conventions. And actually, I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff being done in that scene. There's just a whole lot more that is just churning out content, mm. cookie cutter. People will buy it. People yeah. will listen to it. What are some of the like, well, I'd say like secrets or like kind of things that we listen to and well probably as consumers we've listened to like hundreds of thousands of times just slightly tweaked it's basically there's only like secrets or things that like average people wouldn't know but but, but because you do music like you listen to that track like oh they've just done that Mm. well yeah there's uh the most common one is just in the structure of the song most songs follow like a pretty basic sub like uh structure so you have like a verse a chorus a bridge and that is the whole song okay. you've got. So you like construct it verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. There you go. You've got a song. And then there's also conventions within like chord structures and harmony that you, a lot of like pop music, there's a running joke that a lot of pop music is four chords. It's right. these chord loops that are very easy to set up in modern DAW software, which is like the software that you create music in. And you can create these loops and then just set them going and then you can just add stuff on top and it makes for a really easy workflow, which is why a lot of pop music is built out of these loops. And also, they just sound good. It's like a nice chord progression. Mm. It's like catchy. You can manipulate it in many different ways. Mm. But the amount of stuff that you can play with just three or four 
chords. Yeah. Unbelievable. You can play hundreds of songs if you learn just three chords on your phone. Yeah, I, I remember seeing Ed Sheeran <laughs> doing it on Jimmy Kimmel or something. Mm -hmm. And the first time I saw that, I was like, what? He's yeah. just moving his... I mean, I couldn't do the chords myself, but like, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Most of the power of the song is in the melody. Um, right. In terms of like what makes it memorable. Mm. So if you have just a you if you have like a chord mm. a chord loop you could just change the key and then change the melody change yeah. the drums and there you go new mm. hit <laughs> have you ever thought about that there's probably there's probably a lot of money in um you know designing songs which are popular right so that sounds like the most blanket statement obvious statement but there's probably people who study what the market is like and study these but well, the psychology I've... behind that is what i'm interested in yeah like why we why we I think though, looking at it as like a mass-produced product, is true to a certain extent. But there's a lot of skill that goes into these productions. Like the uh, production on pop tracks is like top-notch for the most part. Like these guys who are making them know what they're doing. They right. are really well made. They're just bland. I find them bland after a while. Because we've heard it all before kind of thing like you probably heard something similar i'm generalizing but yeah yeah, yeah. we're general we're, well yeah we're just two guys two guys two guys two two two, two white men <laughs> talking to him like no nah, i love that no that's cool man that is cool because just like when i'd be watching a film or something there's there's weird things i pick up on that like katie goes you fucking nerd dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but that is cool man like well, why? for me it's finding production mistakes mm. in in like really well produced songs really i love it i absolutely love it you when get you a little find... kick out of it you get a little yeah it's like when someone goes into a hotel room <laughs> there's a little bit of dust mm -hmm. on that fridge or like a food critic dropping his fork you know <laughs> like that hasn't really you know damaged your experience but i'm still gonna say it mm -hmm. you know there's uh this is gonna ruin the song it's not a modern song are you gonna ruin a really good like a song i love it's a really good song it's it's john denver <sighs> um it's rocky mountain high i can't tell you specifically when it is but there's a vocal edit that's like staggeringly obvious it's unbelievable that i i guess it was probably because it was done on tape right, right. and so the edits that you could do were way less than you could now but what's clearly happened is they were like oh john's done like a vocal line and he's held a thing for too long and we've got another line where he's done the other half of it correctly but not one where he's done it all correct. So they just took the bit where he did it too long, faded it out, and then got another line in, just cut, and it sounds really bizarre. Oh, really? I've listened to that song pretty recently, and I didn't even notice it. You wouldn't unless you're listening for it. Right, uh, I think you okay. Do, you get in the tuned ear for this wow. sort of thing. So yeah. It's one of those wow. experiences, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose the comparison for me as an editor is an eye compared to an ear. Being mm. very fucking particular. Like, that is one frame out that like, like just yeah. a cut man and yeah. these viewings you have to go through is is really like kind of humbling and it makes you really perfect what you're doing but a lot of these problems i'm not sure how it is in music but a lot of these things have tight deadlines which restrict like the amount of time you can take to perfect on something like this because yeah. like in music isn't there like times in the year where people try to release stuff like there's mm -hmm. a lot of like politics and kind of things around that like certain artists like why did you release your album the same time i released my album yeah, like, i think it's also everything costs money right mm. so like even if you're just sat in a room making music by yourself mm. that room is costing you money like if you're in a recording studio every second is on the clock mm. you're constantly time watching and so when i worked in a label that produced pop music they would be like expecting you from maybe a four or five hour session with an artist to give like several different options out of that so you'd be like well here's my main this is like a main track that we've got mostly yeah. jotted out yeah and then they'd also be like okay that's good what else and so you'd have like another track maybe the beginnings of or like a hook or a chorus of something else and is this music you would have made beforehand or you're making live with them sorry. with the artist yeah right okay yeah. So, so you're like, making a, a instrumental or music to tailor to what they want to do mm -hmm. on the day wow and how many tracks were you expected to make well so they're demos they're not full tracks so the demos are basically just the bare bones 
skeleton of a track. Mm. They got all the information you need to build it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you rock up to the studio with the artist. You meet them usually that day, and you're like, "What do you want? What mm. is it that you want?" And they usually come with you like, "Oh, like I want. I'm influenced by this, this, this." And like they show you some music, and you're like, "Okay, so you want it to be like a similar vibe, but mixed with this." And you're like. Right, yeah, and then you. S- the way that I do it is I start on the piano and I start like chucking chords together and seeing the reaction from the artist. And usually they'll be like, "Oh, I like that." And then yeah. Like, Let's build off of it, and then it's yeah. sort of, it's quite fun actually. It's mm, really that fun. does sound really fun, like mm-hmm. collaborating with someone. I can also imagine you having some very fucking like hard days with some people. Some people are quite hard to work with. <laughs> yeah, um, no, but that's such a magical process, man like kind of well in some ways improvising see if it works if not yeah wow and you're getting paid that's such a cool job man and what was nice about it is that my personal pitfall as a musician i find is that i can't write lyrics for the life of me whereas these singers and artists were like really good at that and they weren't so good at songwriting so i'd be like that's great keep doing what you're doing i will write the music you write the lyrics and yeah. we're golden that's sick yeah wow um no that's fuck it in a studio as well there's usually like people well i see um like crowds of people like sometimes i see these studio sessions with rappers and stuff and i'm seeing just one guy behind the computer like they're all it's sometimes there's an environment where you're expected to do something very quick oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the as thing. i said everything's on the clock yeah you yeah have a, said uh, that. a technician who will work the computer in the desk and your job is to be as like transparent as possible the artist wants something done you want it done as quickly as possible without them even noticing they're like you need to yeah. be ready finger on the pulse like if they're like oh i've got it you need to be hitting record before they even said that you know yeah. you need to be, like the mantra of the recording engineer is just always be recording just in case like if they're just noodling along yeah. just always be recording because mm. maybe maybe what they have is just that gem and yeah. maybe it won't be repeatable, you know? Mm. So you've just got to be finger on the pulse. One of the artists, um, uh, it's obviously just from stories, I've never met him, but Juice World would go into the studio and, um, well, it'd just be one track. The producer would give him one track, but he would freestyle um, over the track. It'd, mm-hmm. be, it'd be a smash hit. It'd be fucking insane. Huh. But then he'd say to the, the producer, oh, sorry, what what's it called? The person who... Um, plays the music and what you do what's your role it would be producer yeah uh, the producer go the produ- and then he goes oh play the track again the same track completely different lyrics completely mm-hmm. different verse chorus yeah and just another hit and he'd do that a few times and he'd go yeah i'm okay we can make a song out of one of those I'm yeah supposed. which one's the best yeah yeah when you're working with professionals though it's incredibly inspiring people mm. who can just like turn stuff around really fast in a creative environment i feel like it's super impressive when someone can just be like Mm. oh let's just add this i suppose you never know how much work they've done prior to that because it may be a person where that's also respectful they've prepared they've come prepared and they Mm -hmm. can do that but then there's something where you just see pure talent which is like knocks you back even more yeah like god i think one of the best things that i do is i have a really well established ear so if i hear something i can usually play it back pretty pretty well so it's like a guaranteed like way to impress artists if they're just like oh like maybe you can add something to this track and they play it to you and maybe i have like a bass or a guitar and you just start playing along to it and they're just like oh it's amazing Mm. it's like immediate yeah yeah it's great that that is kind of the role i'm in right now is you mold to I'm, i'm below these editors and they're asking can you pull this up? Can you do this? And it's always like, you, mm-hmm. that's what you are valued on, how quick you can do something and how, yeah, well, you can match what they do. Yeah. And it's just nature and it's just something like, oh, that's... It's brutal, isn't it? Mm, it can be brutal. You can have bad days because of it. You might just be having a bad day. Yeah. You're completely beholden to like the higher ups mm. as always in every job. But yeah. With the creative process, it's a very difficult line to, to navigate, mm. I think. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, editing is remarkable to me when like an editor's like oh like maybe we should move that cut five frames ahead or back and it makes a massive difference to the pacing i'm like oh yeah that's a level of preciseness that i don't deal with very often we need to put this image there so the audience think this then so in that moment (laughs) like five minutes later 
it's like a jigsaw, but it's so yeah. it's like the f- the most exciting jigsaw you could ever think of. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. I man. mean, you're in complete control of what the o- the audience sees, hears. Mm. You're like, you're in yeah the zone, right? Do you ever feel like a bit nervous? Have you been handed off like sound to an editor, and then they have to render it? So like. You probably have you ever done that? Have you ever had to do that? Made sound and then pass it to an editor? Because I can imagine as a soundie, you're going, Don't fuck up the sound I've just made because they might uh, make tweaks after that. Maybe I, I've never really dealt with uh, music for film or sound for film mm. all that much. The only comparison I'd have is like I've sent tracks that I've made off for mastering, and mm. mastering is pretty, it's pretty much a dark art. Mm. So you'll have. They will. They have very experienced ears, and they will pick up any mistake in that sonic soundscape. What right. The fuck? So, like, I remember I sent off a track, and he was like, within five minutes, he was like, "You have a slight clip at two minutes and thirty-four seconds and fifty-five frames, or whatever it was." Yeah. And it's like, all right, yeah, fucking hell. I mean, <laughs> good. Thank God I've like hired someone who's really good at their job. But yeah. like One tiny, tiny clip. Mm-hmm. I haven't even clocks. Yeah for sure and um, yeah that that's what it, is it like for me as well output over quality is always something i've battled in my brain like mm-hmm. i'm not 100 percent. i'm never i don't think i've ever been 100 percent on anything i've sent because i'm always like oh i can spend more time on that yeah yeah i, th- I think I that's that. very healthy I, I think looking back on old projects as well people mm. frown on it if you're looking back at old projects but if you're looking back and you think, oh, I could have done that better and that better and that better, mm. you're growing as a creative, right? Yeah. Those people who can't look back, like... Yeah. <sighs> I find it difficult listening to stuff that I've made in the past. Mm. I think it's necessary. I remember you showing me some of the, the old stuff that you made. Yeah, it's pretty... That was cool. So, some of the bands you, um, you, you've you also produced for as well. It's oh, really interesting. I've produced God. for some <laughs> interesting individuals, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just like the mixture of like your internal like what we saw before of your face of just like frustration <laughs> yeah there was this cool. one particular band in college i obviously won't name name names but uh we were paid a pretty small amount but we were learning mm-hmm. and they were like right we just want like a few songs recorded and uh mixed and mastered and so me and my buddy were like yeah we can do that I was doing a separate recording in a different studio at the time, and then I would take on the mixing. Right. And so I came in after finishing that recording, and they're listening back to all the tracks, the band and the the buddy that I was recording with, and I could just tell by the look on his face, as soon as I walked in, like, this studio session was fucking brutal. I could just tell. The band was sat at the back, and they were like, Ooh, yeah, this is great. This is really cool. I really like this. And I walked in, and I was listening to it, and I... I it was so hard not to laugh. I feel really bad about it, but like, it wasn't great. Mm. It, it wasn't great. Like, the guitarist had a really horrible tone. The bassist was decent, but his singing voice wasn't very good. And the drummer, man, holy shit, a drummer makes or breaks the band. No timing whatsoever. <laughs> like, you know, you'd usually have like a bass line going, and then you'd have a kick on mm. one. And then a snare on three, mm. and then you have like a classic, like boom, doo, tch, doo, boom, doo, tch. they would have it the other way around. So they would hear the bass, but wouldn't hear it as a one. So they right. were putting the drums in the wrong place. Okay. So it sounded weird as wow. hell. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was an no. interesting project. <laughs> well, you've moved on to bigger and better that. things now. Yeah. You're working with a lot more. Wow. I'm working with people who are actually really top notch now which nice. is a nice. privilege it's a privilege yeah i think it's good to look back and compare that to mm-hmm. now cuz yeah i'm very much that's that's something I, I think i was talking to my mate about earlier is i go through stages of being really present some days but then there'll be whole days where i'm like big picture and like going in that i'm not sure if that's healthy but um yeah i get what you mean yeah fuck oh man um, have you got any uh, plans for the future, man? What, what, what are you hoping for? Like, so, you know, you listen back to this podcast. Like, what are you, you got any goals in mind? Are you, are you just, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty, I don't, I don't know where I'll be in five years. Like, my job search is so broad mm. and so varied. I like, I'd, you know what I'd love to say is like, I w- would love to have the 
uh, confidence and audacity to say like, obviously my bands are going to take off mm. and I'm going to make a, make a massive thing out of the music career. Like, obviously that's not always, it's not always going to happen, mm. you know? And I'm happy. I'm, I've made my mark. If I was to like have no work, it's like, well, whatever, who cares? Yeah. But You're kind of the musician. That's yeah. That's yeah, kind of I had a good time whilst it was lasting. Mm. Uh, but I'm going to try and ride that wave. See yeah. What, it takes me. what are your like family? Because do any of your family members like play music or like kind of come certainly from not that? professionally. Maybe no. as a hobby. Yeah. Mm. My dad uh, played French horn, classical French horn. Like is that like an innuendo? He used to fuck a French girl. <laughs> yeah. like, not to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he played the instrument. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think it. I think it was probably his influence that made me get into music very young. Like probably it was his idea to get me involved in music from a young age mm. but uh certainly i don't have any nepotism to draw on no one's in the industry man yeah that's good though that there's no, there's no imposter syndrome there there's no like doubt that you know you made this on your own if you do make it it's true it's true that is good yeah yeah some people have no choice oh shit like my dad's like was paul mccartney shit dude uh, you know no what, pressure though, man i would love to have some nepotism <laughs> just saying yeah give me some of that nepotism man <laughs> there was a guy i remember i was working in a studio and he was like oh you're a little young to be here and i was like okay i was like 21 at the time all like, right dude all right mate uh <laughs> what the fuck it's like well yeah okay how old are you he's like oh i'm 23 what the fuck <laughs> Did, uh, but is he one of the people who looked really old and he's like oh no I, I was like oh okay well how come you're like you're not that much older than me <laughs> yeah two how years old here? so i asked him like how come you're here he's like oh uh, my dad's like the head technician i'm like oh mate you're looking like too do you know someone in the industry who's like yeah did you, did you have to suck some off as well to get yeah. <laughs> it's not who you know it's who yeah. you blow <laughs> do you think like there'd be a different dynamic though like oh my dad has basically like, paid my career You'd probably have to like show so much respect to him. There'd be like, your dad would always be like, yeah, I made you. We know what's bad though. I actually looked at that guy differently after he said that his, yeah. I was just like, ah, I'm sure he was a very talented guy. He Mm. really was. And he was doing, he's probably still doing way better than I am now. Mm. But uh, it's just like, ah, would be nice. Would be nice to have some nepotism on my side for once. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's not like it's going to come across it's not like it's gonna, you're going to stumble across some nepotism unless you've got like a long lost cousin a long lost cousin who's just like but when, then when are like you know uh, if they're long lost we don't have that bond yet yeah true it's hard to like bond with people like you're not really meeting up with any family members at 26 and making some new connections yeah you know it's Although, always saying that my family's enormous right I've, I don't know what it is about Sykes's they just seem to inbred or like, maybe yeah uh, must be at this point there's nah. so many of us uh and so like at family gatherings where there's just obscure people that I, you never really see like they've traveled are they family or they just kind of stumbled like, in? is this just a random old man i can't tell he's talking to me for hours yeah um but like i was talking to a cousin that i never really see and he was like oh if you ever if you ever want to come down to london i work in a venue there and i know loads of like promoters and uh and people in record labels and i was like That'll be my backup option. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever don't make it myself, yeah, you know, I've got a fast it, track. If I don't make it up north, I'll go down south. That's Back. like a good analogy of that is like, oh, I'm in a Disneyland queue. There's a two, there's a two hour wait for this ride. And then you just see some, mate, I've got, I've got a fast pass. Yeah, pretty much. Fast pass. Mm-hmm. No, but dude, I've got my friends here. I'm waiting with my friends. So like, just take the fast just pass. Take the fast pass. Come on, dude. You're, come, it's a fun ride, dude. It'll be good. That's the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I know that exact same thing in the uh, TV industry where you're like, I'm like, I'm like a runner at the moment or like edit assistant in TV industry. Then I'll be there and there's like, oh, you're, you're 24 and you're like a producer, 23. But like, you never know. You don't like ask. That's the thing. Cause they could have just worked their ass off. Yeah. Impress the right people. But yeah, it's bad. You usually assume that it's quite a guilt. We usually we're quite as humans we are naturally quite jealous aren't we it's true but the thing is like imagine you're you're a successful guy and your son wants to go into the same industry as you yeah you're gonna open doors for him yeah like of course you are yeah that's just human nature it's i don't i don't have any 
like it's annoying but i don't have anything against people who have just been like my dad's mm. upper in the upper echelons of this company mm. it, it's when it's advertised like oh here's a role that that is advertised it might be on facebook or online but then like they actually have a candidate in mind mm -hmm. yeah that's when it's done or they'll go oh there's a no nepotism bias like we take every candidate based on their experience mm -hmm. and what is but then that's not true. It's, like, yeah. say it for how it is. It, I'd respect them much more if they just went nepotism. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's that's what annoys it's, me, I'd say. It is rough. But it's a part of... The game's the game. Exactly. I don't think you can ever take nepotism out of any industry. It'd be very difficult. Well, apart from, like, like family, like porn, I reckon there's no nepotism <laughs> in that. That's probably the one industry <laughs> where you're like, oh, I, oh my, mate, my sister would be really good for this shoot. <laughs> Imagine. I know a guy. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> Fucking, my brother's got a beautiful cock. You, you have know. to say, Shanice, you think my cock's good? You see, but then again, if someone was like, hey, mate, do you want to do sound on a porn shoot? I'd be like, fuck yes, I do. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> Editing a porn? Well, actually, I don't. Sound would be, I don't know, you're in the moment, but being in an edit suite, editing porn in a room by yourself, my mind would, would be like, what, am I not meant to wank for this? <laughs> They'd be like confused. You just gotta wank whilst you're editing. Too. Yeah, like my br that's two different parts of my brain working mm -hmm, very much. Mm -hmm. Like uh, recently I was editing for um, a BBC drama yep. from home. No porn then. Well, mm? there was like multiple sex films. Ooh, on so the BBC, that's yeah, very Yeah, um, it was like a BBC Three thing. But it was just like, what the hell, man? Like this is... Um, I was just, I've never tried to. It was just like you know when your professional brain meets like another part of your brain and yeah, you get really yeah, confused. Yeah. Fuck man, <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting though. But nepotism probably not in porn, like acting. Not wise. in porn acting. So yeah, yeah, I proved you wrong there, mate. There you go. Fair enough. I yeah. changed my, my changed my tune. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a beautiful reference. My dad's a good reference, actually. <laughs> he's, um, he's seen me a few times. You know times. what? There's probably someone who's got like. Who's, imagine you're just in the porn industry. Hey, Dad, I want to be in the porn industry too. Do you mind opening some doors for me? Well, he could probably spread spread his cheeks for you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, man. Is the... Well, why don't you, like, tell us... So, you J-Page, like, just promote some stuff that you, you want to... Whatever you want to promote. Like, J-Page brand. You're kind of, like, selfless, you know? You said yeah, that so, before. like, check out J-Page. J-Page and the Cowards. Uh, we're going to be changing our tune a little bit, but we're, we're... Like, in terms of your music or the brand, like, in tune, like... So, we're going through a bit of a shake-up. Okay. But, uh, yeah, we'll have some music out pretty soon. Hopefully, going to be releasing, like, a few tracks in the next few months. Will I be getting a feature on any of these songs? We can get you in there, Eddie. Yeah, can, yeah. I get, can I be, like, a, a sample or, like, a soundbite in it? <laughs> what, like, what, what sample? Shut up! Like I, I want like a shouting aggress. Can I have like no, an aggress? No, no, is it not like so. that type of? Your cameo should be just like thoughts. Okay, okay. Yeah. You need a good. So Why don't you tailor a whole song and write it all around just that soundbite? Just thoughts. Like so, I can say that. Uh, uh, like it... the bass drop or like the uh, <laughs> like the drop in the. Music. No, I reckon lo-fi track having you with just like thoughts. Thoughts. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's yeah, we should yeah. go make that song now. We should do it right now. Anyway, yeah, let's log off and we'll go make that song. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, thanks for coming on, mate. Thank and you very um, much for having I'll me. have you back on any time. Nice one. Because I live with you and you um, I need needed a guest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are available on Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, Faith, any of them. Just Google Led Squared and <laughs> like it all. Make my ego go uh, way up there. And hopefully I'll be on stage like this guy one day. But yeah, thank you guys for listening. And yeah, we'll see you when we see you. Bye. Who fucks a shark, dude? I need a piss. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. Fuck. <laughs> you didn't say goodbye. Say goodbye. No. I haven't ended the episode yet. <laughs> you, you don't get to decide when the shit ends, dude. Sorry, dude. I'm going to do? I'm gonna follow you with the camera. <laughs> Just bring... <laughs> <laughs>